Hello there everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make this Celtic inspired micro macrame ring. And this is what mine looks like. So you can see we have this kind of little Celtic knot work at the front, where it looks like we have sections crossing over and under each other. And then there's a ring band going all the way around, which is nice and decorative as well. And I've just chosen to add in these beads along with the cord just to add a bit of interest, but you can also leave them out if you don't want to. And because this is made of cord, it's really nice and comfortable to wear because it kind of just molds to your finger. So it sits around like that. So if you want to learn how to make this, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to be using. Now all we really need for this is the cord itself and then also if you want to add in any beads. And the cord that I'm using is this 0.5mm Eslon in this lovely deep purple colour. And then the beads that I'm going to be adding are these 3mm rounds, so they're metal spacer beads in copper. I just think they'll go really nice with the purple there, but you can obviously use whatever you want to. So something like seed beads would also work really well for this. Now do check out the description box below the video as well, where I always leave the material list and any links you might need. But otherwise, let's get the materials ready and let's get started. And then we need to cut some lengths of our cord. So what I have here first of all is six lengths of about 80 centimeters. And then what I've done is I've gone towards one end of all the cords here and made sure they're even and then gone in about 20 centimeters from there and then tied a knot just to hold them together. And then this is going to be a starting point and we're going to work with these lengths. And then we also need to cut six lengths of about 30 centimeters here and these ones I just leave loose. And then what I've done here is I've taken my cords and then attached that knot onto my project macrame board using these T-pins here. So I'm also going to be using them throughout and it just makes it easier to work with. And then what I'm going to do is just separate my cords out here. So I'm just going to basically split them in half. So I'm getting three and just bring them to either side. And we then need to start making some knots. So what I'm going to do is pick out two of the cords, one from each side. And I'm just going to take two basically that are closest to the middle. So like this. And then I'm going to cross them over. So I like to cross my right one over my left one. And then the left one is coming underneath. So we're going to use that as a working cord. Whereas the right one is over, so that's the holding cord. So what I'm going to do is make a double half hitch. So take the working cord around your finger and through the loop. So back underneath the holding cord there. So we end up with a loop like this. It looks a bit like a reverse six, but making sure it's looping around that holding cord. And then tighten this knot just below that main knot that we have up there. So that one's just temporary. We're going to undo that later on, but it's just to keep them together. And then we need to do it again to make it a double half hitch. So like this, and every time I'm tightening my knot here, I'm making sure I hold the holding cord out to the side at an angle, so about a 45 degree angle or so, where we're going to build this first row of knots. So that's the first one. And then what we need to do is take another cord here from the left side, and then just bring it underneath. So this is now the new working cord. So we just want to do the same, make a double half hitch with that. And that continues the row, so it goes right after the first knot that we made. Tighten that, and then I'm just going to leave that last one on that side. I'm going to then take one from the right side here that we haven't used yet, and bring that over those two working cords. So we're just making the initial little corner of knots here before we then move on. And then I'm going to take the very first working cord, make sure you grab the first one, and then do the same, so make a double half hitch around this holding cord. Tighten that down and then do it again to get it a double. And then you're going to be able to start to see that we're going to get another row here, but right underneath the first one. So they're going to be laid basically side by side. Use the next working cord and tighten that. So we've now got the beginning of two rows here laying right close to each other. And then we have Aside from these two, one on either side that we haven't used yet, we've got these two cords that are now naturally going out towards their own sides. And now I want to then start using these cords that we haven't brought in yet. So I'm just going to work on one side at a time, put the other ones out of the way. So I'm going to start on my left side. It doesn't matter which one you start on because we're going to do the same thing on both sides, but obviously just in reverse. So we have these two holding cords here coming out from the rows of knots. Then we take the cord that we haven't used yet, that's going to be a working cord. So we bring that underneath the first holding cord. So just under the first one there, then make a double half hitch around that holding cord and then tighten that. So again, continue those rows of knots in the same direction. 
So there we go. And then we bring the same working card here under the next holding card. And then make another double half hitch. So like this, you can see we've now just continued from where we started up before with the other cards. But for this one here, we're going to keep using the same working card. So I'm going to straight away, after making that knot, bring it underneath the same holding card. So we basically just swapped hands, but making sure I bring it underneath. And then I'm going to make a double half hitch again. Now when I'm tightening this, I'm going to make sure to still hold that holding card in the same direction. And I'm just tightening this in the opposite way. Do another one to make it a double. So you can see the working cord here has just kind of changed direction. Then go underneath the next holding cord and do the same thing, make a double half hitch. So you can see this again just continues and grows those rows there of knots. There we go. And we need to make one more, so we need to kind of make a turn again. So bring that working cord straight underneath the same holding cord and make a double half hitch. So I swapped hands again. Tighten that. Before we then bring it underneath the next holding cord. And then you can see we've just grown those rows of the knots. So we now have these two rows laying nice and close together. So also make sure you get the rows of knots that are right by each other as close as you can to each other. So we don't ideally have any gaps between them. And then you've done that, you want to do the same on the other side. So I have my two, that's going to be the holding cards here. And then I have that third one that we haven't used yet. So I'm going to bring that underneath the first holding card, the top one. Make a double half hitch. And then bring it underneath the next one. Do the same thing, a double half hitch. And then you can see here how I'm holding these rows. You basically just want to hold these holding cards in the direction that they're naturally coming out from those first knots up there in the corner. So we're going to end up having a 90 degree angle between the two sides. Then change directions so or bring it underneath the same holding card. Make a double half hitch. Go under the next holding card to make a double half hitch again. Tighten that. And then change direction because we need to have this row on this side here, these rows, as long as the other ones. So we need to do another one. Change direction, bring it back underneath the same holding card. Make your double half hitch. And go under the next one. Because also we need to make sure that the working card ends up in the same place really. So going towards the middle of the piece instead of away from the piece. Make your double half hitch. And then here we have the initial few rows, so the first little corner you could call it. And then what we need to do now is bring in all the loose cords that we've left. So we're just going to take one at a time and we need to attach them to these cords here so we can obviously incorporate them and start using them as well. So again, just start on one side at a time. And then I'm going to take the very outer of those two holding cords that are coming out from the end of the rows, then put an end, just leave a short little tail so we have something to hold on to, underneath the holding cord. Then take the long end here, bring it over the top of the holding cord, to then bring it back underneath and through the loop. So just pull that through and you can see, make sure you go through the loop of itself. And then grab hold of it because it's still loose, it's not going to be fastened just yet. So we need to repeat this. So take the long end, go over the holding cord, bring it back underneath and then up through that loop and then tighten that and then that creates the knot by tightening the two ends and then you can just let go it's not going to come undone now and push it all the way down and then just give it an extra little tug to tighten that nicely and then we'll just leave that short little tail there out of the way where it's the long end here that we're then going to be working with so you just want to add three cords like this on this side here and then just to show you on the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing. But obviously it's just mirrored because it's on the opposite side. So again, I grab one of my loose cords, put it underneath the outer holding cord just to show the little tail. And then bring the long end over to come back underneath. 
and go through that loop, keep hold of it to repeat, so over and back underneath and through the loop and then pull them tight and then that creates that knot which has then attached the cards. So again, also do the same amount on this side so we've then attached all of the cards to the piece so we have three extra cards now on each side and now I've attached all the cards here so we have those three extra ones on either side and as you can see it's a little bit more messy but if we just try and keep it organized it makes it a bit easier and what I've also done is I've put some more pins in my work because I have a little bit more work done so I can put them between the rows there I like to put my pins between the rows not through the knots just to make sure I don't damage the cards too much and then we need to get the cards ready that we're going to use for the next section here so first of all what we need to do as well is just do a few more knots because right now I've attached these extra cords with just one knot on that outer holding cord so what I want to just do is bring the other holding cord that's coming from the row just below I'm just going to put the other ones out of the way here just do one side at a time over these holding cords now what I'm going to be doing is making then a double half hitch with these cords again but only the first two the third one that we added in I'm just going to leave out of the way but then just make a double half hitch with each of the other two again just continue that row just below so we still get those double rows the other one here and also that extra knot makes the new card that we added in more secure so there we go so like I said I'm just going to leave that one out for now the third one and what we can do as well is use these pins to help keep cards out of the way so we don't get too tangled up and then I'm going to swap over and just do the same on the other side so just separate the cards out here. This was the outer holding card where I attached the cards to. Then I'm going to find the other holding card. It's mixed up with some of the other ones here. It's this one. And then bring it over the other working cards here that we attached. But before I do that, I'm just going to separate out that last one so I don't use that. So bring that card over and then use one at a time to make your double half hitch. Still want to make sure that it's pushed up though. And then that middle one out of the three new ones, also a double half hitch. So there we go. Then we have all these cards on either side. And like on the other side, I can just use a pin to keep these ones out of the way and then we can kind of just keep putting cards behind the pins if we have to to help stay a bit more organized now for the next section here what we're going to be doing is basically that X in the middle and I'm going to be using the three inner cards from either side for that so basically the ones that are coming towards each other naturally wanting to cross over see that's going to kind of be how we're going to form that X so I'm going to use them so that also means the other holding cards on the sides here, I'm just going to put them out of the way. So we put the outer three cards out of the way and the inner three on either side we're going to be using now. And also what I just want to do, if you want to add beads in, I'm going to be adding them now. So we need to add the beads to the two inner cards, so the one on either side. So just grab one card at a time, add your beads to the very end of the card and then let it drop all the way down to sit right there in that little corner and I'm just going to do the other side straight away just so it's ready instead of not doing it and then moving over and then maybe forgetting to add it I am likely to do that so I like to just kind of add the bead if I can get it on the end so that it's already ready for me so add that on and drop it down but I'm then just going to put these cards out of the way for now because I'm going to start on one side at a time. And what we're going to do is use the card here with the bead on as the working card. So I'm going to bring that, if we have these three cards here, I'm going to bring the working card with the bead on underneath the middle one. That's going to be a holding card. Then making sure that that bead stays in that little corner so it stays trapped up there, make a double half hitch around that holding cord and tighten that in place so that's going to really make sure the bead stays there permanently so a double half hitch 
and make sure when you're holding these holding cords it's in the direction that they're naturally wanting to go so where they're just coming out from the previous rows on the side there go underneath the next holding cord out of the two there make a double half hitch and then we need to change direction straight away so bring it underneath the same holding cord tighten that and then underneath the inner holding cord make another double half hitch then change direction again so bring it under the same cord so basically just swap hands make a double half hitch tighten that to go underneath the other holding cord and make your last knot for now so you can see here we're building these rows of knots now coming out from the side basically of the rows that we have on the side but going back in towards the middle so like that make sure they're nice and tight then what we need to do is swap over to the other side and do the exact same thing so I'm just going to now put these out of the way and here same thing we're taking the cord with the bead on bringing it underneath the middle one out of the three and then making a double half hitch and again just hold the holding cords in the direction that they're naturally going so basically we're aiming for these rows to come down as well at the angle and they're going to end up meeting right there in the middle so underneath the next one make a double half hitch change direction so under the same holding cord tighten the knot so gradually building the rows more and more under the next one here make your knot make sure we don't get tangled up before we then can change direction again so one last time for now under the same holding cord make your double half hitch so then go under the next one to make the last one for now here because then we're going to be able to see that these two rows are now long enough that basically when I take the two holding cords from either side and cross them over they're going to meet up perfectly and what we're going to need to do now is actually connect them as well so there's going to be a connection point right here and how we're going to do that is using these holding cords so what I'm going to do is take the inner holding cord from either side so the two that are closest to each other right there in the middle then I'm going to cross my right one over my left one just like we did in the beginning and then I'm going to make a double half hitch with the left one that's coming underneath around the right one that's the holding cord and then this tightens the two sides nicely together but obviously we need to use the other cords as well so take the next holding cord from the left side that's coming underneath make a double half hitch again so you can see here as well that's continuing the row from the right now grab the other holding cord from the right the one that's below bring that over the two working cords to then make a double half hitch with each of them again and we're also continuing that row and you can really see we have then created more or less a diamond shape here or a square depending how you look at it and there we go so we now have that full shape in place so now what we basically need to do is this is the first half of the X you could say so we now need to make the other half but before we do I want to add in my next set of beads here so that's going to be two just get this one pulled a bit out of the way to the outer cords one on either side which are then going to also be the working cords for this next section so grab the first one add your bead onto the end of the cord and let it drop all the way down and then again just like before I'm going to add the other one straight away so I don't forget about it and then let it drop all the way down as well and then I'm just going to work on one side at a time so put the other ones out of the way and then really it's the same principle so we just got to make what we just made on the first half of the X so I bring the working cord with the bead on underneath the middle 
one of the cords, which is the first holding cord, make sure that bead stays trapped in that corner and then make a double half hitch and still we're just continuing the same direction so we're basically continuing these rows here in the exact same direction so you just hold the holding cord in that way underneath the next one make another double half hitch change direction so underneath the same one to then make the knot in the other direction and tighten it still under the next holding cord here, so under the outer one before we then can change direction again, so underneath the same holding cord to make another double half hitch and then we can start to see here that it's going to be the same as the first half that we made the last knot here under the next holding cord and then the working cord has ended up facing in towards the middle of the piece. So that's the one leg of this half you could call it. On the other side do the exact same thing. So separate your cords out, you take the outer one with the bead on underneath the next one, make a double half hitch to start building these rows and then go under the next one to make a double half hitch as well. change direction tighten the knot under the next holding cord to so the outer one to make another knot and we're building up those rows there we can start to see them more change direction So we then bring the working cord underneath the inner holding cord and make the last knot for now. And there you can see we basically have the complete X. So these are now equivalent to the first half that we made. So now what we need to do, before we can move on with these inner cords here, the groups, is we actually need to use the outer ones that obviously are further up, so we need to bring them down to join up with these ones here. So again, I'm going to do one side at a time, and if you want to, we can always take these to the opposite side just to get them a little bit out of the way. And then I'm going to release the cords on this left side. And then just make sure that that bottom knot that's kind of still loose, the third cord that we attached, that is pushed all the way up so it's nice and close to the other ones. And then what we need to do is start using this cord here, the new one that we attached, to then make a row of knots here, but we need this to curve around so it comes back in and meets up with the end of this row down here. So technically we've already made that first knot there when we attached it. So what we need to do is just make sure it's underneath that second holding cord, and then we need to start making a knot here. Now what I'm gonna do is start making the knot in the same way. So the first half here, but instead of making a full double half hitch, what we need to do is add that curve into it now while we're making this knot. So I made that first half and then before making the other half I'm going to bring this working cord underneath that same holding cord straight away and then make the other half in the opposite direction here. So basically we're changing the direction within the knot, not after the knot. And then tighten that. And then bring it underneath the outer one. And then make a full double half hitch, so just a regular one. And then you can maybe slightly see that the rows of knots here have actually changed direction a bit, so they're coming more straight down now instead of going out to the side. And then change direction again. Just make another full double half hitch. While holding now those holding cords straight down. And building the rows, go underneath the next one. Make a full double half hitch. Change direction again. Make another full one. Underneath the outer one. Another double half hitch. Before we then change direction again to bring it underneath the same working cord. Tighten the knot 
full double hair fitch and then go underneath the inner holding cord and now we need to add in that curve again so that's just the exact same way make the first hair first of all and then bring it underneath straight away so change direction within the knot and then you can start holding that holding cord more in towards the middle so basically what we want is for this row that we're making or these rows to end up right by the end of the one that's coming from the middle out to this side so just hold that holding cord in that direction underneath the outer one to make a full double hair hitch like that and then you're going to be able to see again that the holding cords there have changed direction so if I just release the two holding cords from those inner rows from this pin here we're going to be able to see by crossing them over it's going to then be able to bring those two together so what we need to do now is make another connection point here basically like we've done previously but we just need to make sure that we're crossing them over and under in the right way so because I kind of want an outer frame here what I want to make sure to do is that these rows on the outer edge are crossing, looking like they're crossing over so that means I'm going to again take the two inner ones but then in this case here I want to cross my left one over the right one and then use that right one that's coming underneath as a working cord to make a double half hitch to then connect those rows together and start making that connection point so like that then take the other holding cord from that right side that's now a working cord make a double half hitch again then bring the other holding cord from the left side here over the two working cords and then just make a double half hitch with each of them and the other one because in that way we kind of get that even look of almost like a frame running around the outside with that X in the middle so that's now been connected those two sides so basically what we're going to do now is get the other side to the exact same point so I just put these out of the way release these ones here and we just literally do the same thing so we want to start with the outer cord here so the outer holding cord has got that knot on it which is the new cord and you just want to that's then technically that first knot bring it underneath the inner holding cord to then start the knot but this is the one where we already got to make the turn within the knot so bring it underneath straight away to change direction and get that curve going and then back towards the outer one and make a full double half hitch so like I said this is the exact same thing as the other side so follow the technique that I've already showed you there obviously it's just mirrored and again once you get to the bottom there connect these two rows together as well so now I completed that side as well then as you can see here we're almost done with this main part of the ring all that's really left to do is obviously finish off this little corner as well so just make the same thing that we started out with so basically we need to make the rows on either side and then connect them so they're already going towards each other so I put the outer three cords on either side out of the way because we're done using them then we have the three inner ones on either side here naturally wanted to cross over each other and the first thing I want to do is add my beads again because they're going to be the equivalent beads to the very first ones that we added so I'm going to take the inner cord on either side add the bead there let it drop all the way down and then separate out the other one and then also add my bead onto that and then let it drop all the way down so that's ready but then I'm just going to start on the one side so I take that cord with the bead on bring it underneath the middle one of the three making sure that bead stays trapped in that corner and then do a double half hitch and tighten it so that bead stays trapped there permanently and again we now just want to hold these holding cords in the direction that they're naturally going so we need both of these sides to come in towards each other and meet up there in the middle bring it underneath the next holding cord make a regular double hair hitch change direction so straight underneath the same one double hair hitch tighten that nicely so underneath the inner one and then we can start to see the row is gradually building up here 
like that. Change direction again, underneath the same card. So we need to bring these working cards back to the outside, pointing away from the piece, which is then what's going to happen with this knot that we're doing now. A double hair hitch, tighten that, and that's then this one side. Then we need to do the same on the other side. So separate that card out with the bead on. So we can then bring that underneath the middle one to do a double hair hitch. And make sure that B gets trapped in place under the outer one to do your double hair hitch. Change direction. A double hair hitch again to go underneath the inner one. You can really start to see the rows building here, so they're going to meet up right at the bottom. Change direction. And also really get that effect of kind of the framework around the piece. Because of how we made them cross over and under each other. The outer one. And then again that working cord is pointing away from the piece. So now we have the holding cords from either side. that are naturally wanting to cross over each other. You can see there. They're going to fit and just make that connection point. So we just do that in the exact same way as the other times. In this case, I want to make sure the two inner cards I start with, I cross my right one over the left one, just to make it consistent with the beginning. Tighten them together. And then do the other one. So again, we'll kind of continue the rows from the right. Then bring the other holding cord from the right there. Over the two working cords and then do a double hair fitch with each of them. So there we go. That's basically now the connection point and we have the little point down here, which is the same as the beginning. So you can remember from the beginning there, we started on making that little corner, so we also have that now here on the bottom. So what I just want to do is reposition some of these pins, just because otherwise it's moving around a little bit. So again, I'm just putting them down through the space between the rows of knots there, and that's going to hold it in place nicely. So now we have this main part of the ring done. So what we've got to do now is move on to do the ring band. So I'm just going to start on this side because we're already in position. So the cards that are put out of this way, the three on the outside, on either side there, I'm going to leave out of the way. I'm not going to be using them. I'm just going to be using these six middle cards to make the ring band. And I'm going to start on this side, like I said, then we can flip it, undo that knot that we made initially, and then just do the same thing on the other side. So again, if you want to, you can also add beads to the ring band here. If you don't want to, you can just leave them out. But I'm just going to be adding the beads first of all. So again, I'm going to add one bead to each of the outer cords. So just add your bead, let it drop all the way down. And then the same on the other side as well. Again, so that's ready for when I go to use that cord. Let that drop down. Then we need to start using these cords. And again, these are going to be the working cords. So just start from one side. So I'm starting from the left and then I'm bringing that cord with the bead on underneath the next one. And then the cord with the bead that's going underneath is the working cord. So I'm going to be making a double half hitch around that holding cord. Just like this and that traps that bead in place. And then bring it underneath the next holding cord. Just like that. Then I want to go to the other side and do the same thing. So I'll bring the outer cord with a bead on underneath the next one. Make sure the bead stays in that corner. Make your double hair hitch and then bring it underneath the next holding cord. Make your double hair hitch. And then we have these two in the middle. So I'm also going to just bring the current working card that I'm making knots with underneath that one 
and do another double hair hitch. So just like that. And now what I want to do is I want to make a little bit of a frame to this section. So to do that, I want to again start from the left and then bring the outer cord now over the other two and in towards the middle. And then the first one that's coming underneath, I'm going to make a double hair hitch with. So we're basically changing direction now in how we're making the knots. So this row that we're making is going to go below the other ones and kind of frame them off. Make that double hair hitch. Then I take the next one and make the double hair hitch with that one as well. Now I go to the other side and do the same thing. So the other one goes over the others and then just grab the very next one that's coming underneath. In this case, the first one. Make a double hair hitch. So this also frames off those rows of knots. Grab the next one. Working your way in towards the middle. And then the two middle ones again, you also just use that one. Make your double hair hitch in the exact same way. And you get a little point here and that's kind of finished off those rows nicely. So it just frames those rows of knots in. So now what I want to do is continue making this, but I just want to step it down a bit because I also want to be aware that I need to get rid of some cords to make it easier to finish off. So what I'm going to do is separate out the very outer one on either side and just put that out of the way. And then I'm going to just be using these. So I'm going to be doing the same thing, but just with less cards. So first of all, again, I want to add my beads. So one to each of the outer cards. Drop it down. And also the one on the other side. And then also drop that down. So they're now ready. And then we're just going to, like I said, be doing the same thing. So take the outer left one first. That's the same thing that we started with on that side. Bring that underneath the next one. And then make a double hair hitch. Make sure that bead gets trapped in place. On the other side, take the one with the bead, bring it underneath the next one. Make sure the bead gets trapped in place. And then the current card that we're using, also bring it underneath the next one in the middle there. Same principle as the first one. Make that double hair hitch. But now we just got to frame them off and again it's the same thing but like I said we just have less cards to work with so I'm just going to the outer one on the left side bringing that over now just that single card make your double hair hitch so this row now comes in the opposite direction as the previous ones on this side on the other side take the outer one bring it over the others make a double hair hitch with the ones coming underneath And the last one in the middle there, also do a double half hitch. And then you can see it's the same principle and same technique, but this little section is then just slightly smaller than the first one because we separated those cards out. So now what you want to do is basically keep repeating this little one until you reach the length that you need. So obviously don't make too much, so just make a few of them. Then undo that knot, like I said, take this piece off or flip your board around and repeat the same on the other side and then you want to obviously figure out how long you need both sides to be to be able to meet up and complete the size that you want for your final ring band. So I now made the size long enough here so I know this is going to fit the size ring that I want and I just want to mention as well that if you find that the size you're going to need isn't going to be an even amount of sections there on both sides that you're going to make then that's absolutely fine. So you can see here I have three of the small ones on one side and four on the other one. That doesn't matter at all. Now I also want to mention is I recommend really testing it throughout making the ring bend there so you know when to stop whether you use your finger or a ring mandrel that's completely up to you. So obviously see if they actually fit nicely together and it's going to be comfortable to wear so not too small or too big. But also you'll find that the lengths of cord that we have left are quite different. But this is because some of them were mainly used as working cords so they got used up more so they're going to be shorter left. Whereas some of them were mainly used as holding cords so obviously they didn't get used as much. But we're just going to finish them all off in the same way here. So then to connect the two ends together there, so we can obviously have it a complete ring band, what I'm going to do is bring them together. Now this can be a little bit fiddly because it's still loose and wants to open up, but just hold on to it the best you can. We're going to focus on one side at a time, so I'm just going to work on this right side first, 
and I'm going to use these two cards that are pretty much right at the tip on this side closest to each other then I'm going to take the one from the bottom here cross that over the top one and then that top one there comes underneath so we're going to make a double half hitch with that around that bottom one so this is what I said can be the fiddliest part because it's all loose and wants to move around but just bring it around that's the first half of it and then again hold that out to the side so that's the holding card bring the working card over the top and back around and underneath so it loops around again now I want to make sure I just tighten the first half before I tighten the second half just to make sure there's not a big gap or anything so something like that just double checking it here so it pulls the two ends together nicely and then you can kind of put your finger on it and then tighten that second half and then pull it nice and tight there so that's the one side then I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side so those two cards in the middle that are closest to each other but from either side and then the bottom one from how I'm holding it here I'm crossing over the top one which means the top one there is coming underneath so that's a working card so I'll bring that around the top and back underneath now it's already easier because the other side is holding the piece together it's still a bit fiddly because obviously I'm holding it freehand but it's much easier because we don't have to worry about it coming undone and then around again to make it that double half hitch and then just tighten that as well and pull it nice and tight so this is then the connection point so you can see it continues the ring band pretty nicely it blends in nicely but obviously there is that connection point whether you really add in the beads or not but then that's just how you bring them together and it's going to be nice and secure especially now as well as we finish off all these excess cords so I'm going to finish off all these cards here in the same way so I'm just going to show you where it's easier to see and because I'm using a synthetic card I can singe down the ends with a lighter if you're not though or if you don't really like using that technique you can always put a bit of glue around where the cards are coming out and then cut off the excess but the way I'm going to do it is grabbing some of the cards here I like to do just a couple at a time that are right close together and get the other ones out of the way and then I take my scissors and I cut off the excess but what I want to make sure to do is leave about one or two millimeters where the cards are coming out from so something like that and then get rid of the excess there then I take my lighter and I always be careful because it's a naked flame so it does get hot and then I just go in and singe down those ends so basically melt them and then I make sure that I push the um, ends in while they're still soft so you can mold them you can also use the actual light itself if you feel like it's a bit too hot or you're nervous about it but I don't really find that it tends to be that bad because I like to push them in like that with my finger just to make sure that when I go to wear it we obviously don't want any little bits scratching on the skin or anything so that's how I basically finish off all the cards so do the rest in the exact same way so now that I've finished off all the lengths of card then this is what my ring looks like so you can see we get this nice Celtic inspired effect because of how we make the cards look like they're crossing over and under each other. And then also the rim band going all the way around which is also nice and decorative. And obviously those beads add a little bit of extra interest to the piece which obviously you can choose to leave them out if you don't want to use them. But then it's also nice and comfortable to wear because it's made of cord so it kind of just molds to your finger and sits comfortably like that. But then I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial here for this Macromacrami Celtic inspired ring. So I have loads of other tutorials on my channel so feel free to check that out and you can also subscribe to not miss future tutorials and also if you want to you can follow me on Instagram because first of all I post a lot there but also if you ever make anything that you want me to see you can always tag me. My Instagram information is going to be down in the description box below so feel free to check that out otherwise thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.